I wanted to ask you about leadership. I wanted to sort of, you know, having steered through uh, the pandemic and as we talked about already, is the recent volatility. What lessons from that time and, and your time at PGM that you've you've taken already from that? from that, what leadership lessons you, you, you have? So I think that um, for any active manager, uh, the culture is the most important kind of secret sauce that we, uh, that we have. Um, you know, in, or in order to generate excess returns as an active manager, two things need to be true. I mean, first of all, you need an investment thesis that will turn out to be right. And secondly, you need it not to be priced into the market right now. Right? So you need to have a non-consensus view. Um, getting either one of those right independently is actually not that difficult. Getting them both right together is tricky and requires a special culture. Because you need a culture that will encourage and indeed support and, and you know, make sure that you have unconventional views. And then it needs to be willing to support that unconventional view while it is wrong until it is right. Right, and because by definition the markets being said, well, that that can't be right. Here's the pricing of it. Uh, when that can be true, whether that that's how many times the Fed's going to cut rates or what's going to happen to value uh, strategies, and if you aren't a manager who can both help people develop those views and then support people while they are wrong, um, then you might as well be an index player. Um, and I think that that is a true trick. And it requires a lot of trust. It requires a long-term philosophy about your people and your business. And it requires a certain humility because you know that sometimes you're gonna be wrong. Mm -hmm. And the last thing you want is for people after they've been wrong to feel that they can't be wrong again because we need them to have views that are not represented in the market. And that, that is a, a real leadership challenge. And people in, in my role in active managers, one of our main jobs is to reinforce that culture of supportive but highly challenging debates that results in non-conventional ideas. Supporting people when they're wrong. I like that. I think it's a very interesting phrase. I wanted to hear a little bit more about that because um, that's quite challenging, you know, uh, oh, because so much what we do is predicated on me measuring success as how many times you got things right. Uh, but of course, you know, people, there's only a certain amount of tolerance for being wrong. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm just interested to hear a bit more about how you, what you mean by that and how you would, is it about sort of getting them from A to B or is it just allowing them to take risks, a certain freedom of thinking? What is it? Well, uh, you, you raise a, a, a good point. Part, part, of, part of an ability, I think, is to of backing people is also that you need a very strong risk management system. So all of the unconventional views that we take are taken within a quite conventional and extremely well-constructed risk management framework. And I think they need to go hand in hand or you can go off the rails pretty, pretty quickly. Um, but having said that, uh, part of the art in judging investment performance um, is being able to know when you're wrong for the right reason. And what I mean by that is, you know, I can tolerate people who the market hasn't kind of come to their point of view, but the investment thesis that they laid out is actually logical and it, it, it is working. It just hasn't worked yet. Versus an investment thesis where there's been style drift from it, or it hasn't actually delivered what the, the, we thought it was going to on the tin, in which case I'm a good deal less tolerant of that. So you really do need to be able to be quite nuanced about saying what is failure, what is failure but it's just going to succeed in a little bit more time, um, and then what really is just a matter of market timing and you just need some patience. And the ability to judge between those takes, uh, I think, experience. I mean, in some ways, I am in the business of judging judgments, and that is something that takes a good deal of uh, pattern recognition. You hear a lot about the benefits of diversity of thought. Do you think you have enough diversity of thought? It comes under, I suppose, the umbrella of diversity per se. But do you think you still have more further to go in that respect? And what, how do you try as an organization to encourage that? I suppose that's the question I really want to ask. Yeah, well, um, I think you all always, we all want more diversity of thought. We, we do believe that. Uh, we make better decisions when we have people who think differently about problems, and that's one of the ways you get unconventional ideas and, and ideas that are not uh, yet priced in. 
And we all know that people think differently about problems and solve problems differently. And part of that may be uh, their background and their education and then, you know, their prior experience. But part of it is that people process information differently. And you need people who are Cartesian thinkers and people who are more intuitive mm -hmm. and people who you know, have a liberal arts education and somebody who is a physics major. Mm -hmm. And all of that helps you, I think, get to a much better answer. Thank <laughs> you.